Yo, what's up, fam? How have you been? How are you doing? You're checking out why Drake just got this by Childish Gambino. Wait, man. Childish Gambino dropped an album. I haven't checked it out, man. Let me know if it's worth the check out, man. And then, yeah, I'll do the album reaction. Man. But for now, let's check out this one, man. As of right now in the hip hop world, mm. it seems like every time we are hearing a major player within rap release new music since the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beat, we are finding out even oh, more. Oh, oh, oh. Fresh, man. More information that has been hidden below the surface about just how hated Drake is by his peers, and most recently, the latest rapper who has dissed Drake is none other than Childish Gambino. And as Gambino just released his final album, Bando Stone and the New World, and aimed to wrap up every single loose end of his career with this one record, aside from all of his career and artistic goals on this project, one of the things he had to address were his looming tensions with Drake, as if we remember, things boiled up between these two in the summer of 2023, where in an interview, Gambino revealed that his chart-topping single, This Is America, was originally supposed to be a Drake diss. And as the hip-hop world was trying to come to terms with the fact that one of the most culturally important records of the late 2010s was originally going to be his song that was attacking Drake. Many people have questions about what made Gambino have this much disdain for Drake, but before we could ever get that answer... Drake came back out and dissed Gambino publicly as during his It's a Blur tour in 2023. One of the graphics Drake designed to have appeared during his show called Gambino out as when he performed his classic 2011 song Headlines. The headline that would appear on the screens throughout the arenas he performed at was a message saying, the overrated and over-awarded hit song This Is America was originally a Drake diss record. And now while it's obviously fair that Drake should have responded to Gambino after getting called out, the fact that he said this is America is not just overrated, but over-awarded only speaks to just how out of touch he is with what the rest of hip-hop and the music world perceives as important and cutting edge. But regardless of this, since Drake tried to tear down one of the biggest moments of Gambino's career and one of the most important in recent hip-hop history, no, this, the longest time this song was Gambino dope, was... Man. This song was really dope, man. That's really a good edge, track. But regardless of this... Since Drake tried to tear down one of the biggest moments of Gambino's career and this one of the most hilarious. important in recent hip-hop history. For the longest time, Gambino was silent on this it's situation, like so, but now man. with this new record, on the track Yoshinoa, we have finally gotten the long-awaited response from Gambino that addresses all of their issues and a lot more, as in this song. Gambino pretty much designed this track to be a full-on letter to Drake where he isn't just responding to their initial back and forth, but he is digging so much deeper into the roots of the problem as a whole. And Damn. while Gambino never mentions Drake by name here, or even hits us with references that are so clearly disses like Kendrick Lamar did on Like That, as soon as the first verse on this track kicks in, through this subtle aggression and subliminals Gambino throws out, he... when you put not just his wordplay, but then also the message of the greater track together, you can clearly see that this is a swing at Drake, and at that, one that could have very significant effects on the rest of the hip-hop world. Now, the first signal we get that sets up what's about to go down are the opening lines on the first verse, I put your boy in the seat. And obviously, as Drake's nickname is, of course, the boy. Mm -hmm. And then with the context that Gambino is saying that he puts the boy in the seat, which is not just his way of saying that from making television to music, Ooh. he is the overall superior artist. But it's also... Nah, man. Atlanta is dope, man. This is my all-time favorite scene. ...saying that from making television to music, he is the overall superior artist. But the it's Davis. also playing on the fact that Drake publicly hasn't been seen as the best tag. These bars don't just have multiple layers that are alluding to everything that's been thrown around about Drake. But they are extremely well written, and as Gambino says, you got your biz in the streets. Mm. This seems to be referencing just how much of a public mess Drake's life is, which at the end of the day is all due to the way he tries to show off even the weirdest and most disturbing corners of his lifestyle to the rest of the world. Now, if this wasn't enough, the next major moment in this verse that gives away who this song is directed to is when Gambino says, I find your house on the app. People around you ain't slack. They plot and hard when you slap. And then as Gambino continues to rap about how the person he is talking to has people in his corner that do not have his back. Damn. These are direct references to everything that went down with Drake and Kendrick Lamar. As by finding his house on the app, he is talking about Not Like Us and its cover art, which is of course Drake's mansion. And then the rest of the lyrics here all seem to be referencing the themes Kendrick harped on in 616 in LA and closing out this verse. Gambino delivers a very protective series of bars where he tells the person he is rapping to, 
that if they decide to respond to these jabs, do not bring his kids or family into things, which is another reoccurring trope. Hold on, hold on, what are you saying? Jabs, do not bring his- Fuck with my kids, you fuck with your life. You fuck this host, I'm fucking my wife. No, nah, that's insane. Man. Kids or family into things, which is another that's insane, reoccurring man. trope at this point in rap beefs with Drake, as from Common to Kanye to Pusha T to Kendrick. Reoccurring trope at this point in rap beefs with Drake, as from Common to Kanye to Pusha T to Kendrick. We have seen Drake loves bringing people's wives and kids into things, and now after this initial verse, the track takes an insane turn, as with a beat switch that makes everything much more gritty musically. Gambino has the musical environment around him to not just spit the uncompromised truth, but to deliver one of his best verses ever, and he does that here. As beyond just him and Drake's own beef, he doesn't just put to bed some of the narratives that have followed him around for his entire career, such as that Gambino is not hip-hop because of how expansive and creative his artistry is, but beyond ripping off the labels that some people have been trying to put on his name for over a decade at this point, Gambino digs way deeper into Drake than most other rappers ever could. As at this point in Gambino's life, where he is a father who is more focused on his family than the music. Is, isn't this like the uh, soundtrack to a movie or something? I was just releasing a movie this year or the next day. Isn't this like a soundtrack for the movie? Music industry, he begins to say things like, I was busy building the life that people don't have. Told me that money make you lonely, it ain't so bad. Mm. Which is reiterating this idea that Gambino has grown as a man. Meanwhile, Drake is still focusing on the superficial things like how much money he has, which he pretty much talks about on every single piece of music he releases still. And now, as Childish Gambino explores more about yeah, fatherhood in this so verse, well. he says, People's jokes are so dad, they haven't seen their son in a month. Damn. Which is, again, playing on this idea of Drake not being a present father. And as the production intensifies on this track to reflect Gambino's visceral emotions, he goes even deeper as he talks about how Drake has sold out on any bit of his intent. This rapper's cosplay the industry Comic Con, the industry evil people, me and Finn got a trombone. And that he is pretty much cosplaying a lifestyle that he hasn't just never lived, but that can also inflict pain onto others. And as Gambino spells this out, he brings things back to how this all started in 2018 when he said that This Is America was supposed to be a Drake diss as he explains his intentions for wanting to do that. But then not letting such an important song and cultural moment become a part of a rap beef. And as Gambino references how the truth is coming to life and where it wants, while people were confused. No, no. And as Gambino references how the truth is coming. If it's written in stone, freak it and leave it alone. Give it time, let the truth come to light. Let him catch up. Ninjas peeping like Dave, he was in the right. life and where it wants. While people were confused by his comments about <clears throat> Drake, now they are starting to realize that he was making sense all along. Gambino is able to respond to Drake pretty masterfully as he ties together both the personal narrative of their own feud and ties it into the larger picture of his career. And now, at the emotional climax of this performance, from exaggerating Drake's age to make his inability to act the slightest bit mature even more embarrassing, to then talking mm. about his inability to appreciate anything that does not support the low-quality artistry that he is squeezing every last penny out of, as Gambino spit some of his best bars in years. While Gambino dismantles a lot of this tension around him and Drake by just speaking his uncompromised truth, as he does this, he also reveals what the bigger purpose of this song is beyond just dissing Drake. And in the grand sense of this all, I think what Gambino is really trying to tell us here, beyond just how he hates Drake, is not just more impactful, but it also explains why he waited a year to respond to Drake's disses in the first place. Now, as Gambino closes this song out and tells us how he is alert... I'm allergic to the drum. He saw me and Tyler. I'm allergic to this rap shit. Allergic to the drama, and because of this, has become allergic to the rap game as a whole at this point in his life. From more bars about how his Instagram captions are more thought out than actual lyrics, to then saying that the person who he is writing this about is an absolute creep. From start to finish, we get as much confirmation as we can that this song is about Drake, but at the same time, with the conclusion Gambino reaches, we also find out that this song is not here to diss Drake in the same way that a track such as Like That was for Kendrick Lamar. And although Gambino does say that he would not back down if Drake responded to it in that way, instead of just attacking Drake for the sheer disdain of it, Gambino is using Drake as a framing device for multiple reasons. Now, one of these is to explain why he is done with music and hip-hop, as he talks about how rotten of a state the music industry is in currently. And it's also to use Drake 
as a conceptual mirror to the person Gambino is showing us he is throughout this album, as when he alludes to and references the public humiliation that's been on display for Drake, and goes deep into Drake's failure as not just an artist and representative of hip-hop, but most importantly as a man. Gambino is showing us a living example why if he yeah. didn't stop making music, and fell further downward into the dark parts of the industry, he would be no different than the guy he's dissing. Now this is actually quite genius, and adds a very important lens to this entire era in rap music that we are living in. Because in a world where many people, including Drake, are always making fun of other rappers he came up with for not dropping music as much as him, Gambino is telling us that the way Drake has pretty much exploited the industry, as opposed to the way he and many others have almost stepped away from it, is the reason why guys like Gambino, Kendrick Lamar, and ASAP Rocky all have families, and Drake is still stuck in this never-ending cycle of immaturity. So if there is one takeaway from this song, it's that Gambino at this point is a man who is trying to be the best dad and husband he can be, and as he is giving us this final chapter of his rap career, he is telling us that in order to grow up and not end up like the guy who is the biggest joke in music right now, he has to move on. Now, all in all, it is really brilliant how Gambino was able to close up one of the last remaining threads of his rap career in terms of this beef with Drake, and use it as a framing device for the entire album, and it's a sentiment to the calculated artistry he brings to the table that allows for him to deliver such visceral performances and now, Beyond just this song, if you want to see how genius this album is, and understand how this is a mere piece of the puzzle to what is creating a musical experience that is way more substantial and impactful than anything Drake has released in about a decade, check out the suggested video. You think... Clover was actually decent, Drake, or this is just a rich man. Now, let me know, man. I feel like Gambino is the guy who's like chill back, who doesn't like noise or everything like that. You know what I'm saying? So let me know if he does like actually this or something. <laughs> 